In this video, we shall refer to the following example. We would like to solve this ILP problem. To maximize Z equals to 40x1 plus 30x2, subject to 10x1 plus 6x2 less than or equals to 35, x1 plus x2 is less than or equals to 4, x1 and x2 are non-negative, and both x1 and x2 are integers. This is a pure integer programming problem. If we plot the inequalities on the plane and highlight the points that satisfies all constraints for the ILP problem, we obtain the points here. If we check all these points, we found that the ILP problem has a maximum value of z equals to 140, which is achieved when taking x1 equals to 2, x2 equals to 2. Or, if we move the level set of the objective function towards increasing value, we observe that the last point that the line touches is 2, 2. So, it is the optimal point and it yields the value z equals to 140 for the objective function. Now, let us illustrate the branch and bound method again with the same example. First, we shall solve the LP relaxation. The LP relaxation is to maximize z equals to 40x1 plus 30x2, subject to 10x1 plus 6x2 is less than or equals to 35, x1 plus x2 is less than or equals to 4, both x1 and x2 are non-negative. And we remove the constraint that both x and y are integers. We can use any method we have learned in previous chapters for that. Suppose we solve it by graphical method. We notice that the LP relaxation has a maximum value of z equals to 147.5, which is achieved when having x1 equals to 2.75 x2 equals to 1.25. If both x1 and x2 are integers, then this point would have been an optimal solution to the ILP problem as well. However, now it is not. This point, in fact, doesn't satisfy the ILP problem. If we round each of these two coordinates to the nearest integer, we get the point 3, 1. This point 3, 1 is even not in the feasible region of the LP relaxation. In general, the optimal point of the ILP problem is not necessarily the roundup or round down of the optimal point of the LP relaxation. Since the point 2.75, 1.25 doesn't satisfy the integer constraint in our ILP problem, we need to proceed further. This time, both x1 and x2 are not yet integer. We can pick either x1 or x2 as the variable to create two branches. That is, we can either pick x1 and split the LP relaxation into two subproblems by imposing the additional constraint x1 less than or equal to 2 to the first subproblem and x1 greater than or equal to 3 to the second subproblem. Or we can pick x2 and split the LP relaxation into two subproblems by imposing the additional constraint x2 is less than or equal to 1 to the first subproblem and x2 is greater than or equal to 2 to the second subproblem. Let's suppose we pick x1 and branch the LP relaxation into two subproblems by imposing the additional constraints x1 is less than or equal to 2 to the first subproblem and x1 is greater than or equal to 3 to the second subproblem. problem 
We hope that this time we manage to get a point which fulfills the integer conditions in the ILP problem. We can denote the first subproblem with the inequality x1 less than or equal to 2 as p sub a, and denote the second subproblem with inequality x1 greater than or equal to 3 as p sub b. The figure shows the feasible regions for p sub a and p sub b respectively. Although we no longer consider those points with x1 coordinates between 2 to 3 here, we will not miss any points for our ILP problem because these points doesn't have integer value for their x1 coordinates. The optimal points of the integer linear programming problem is still contained in either the feasible region of P sub A or the feasible region of P sub B. For the subproblem P sub A, the system is to maximize this objective function subject to the constraints 10x1 plus 6x2 less than or equals to 35, x1 plus x2 less than or equals to 4, x1 is less than or equal to 2, and both x1 and x2 are non-negative. By graphical method, we get that the objective function has a maximum value of 140 achieved at the point 2, 2. Since both x1 and x2 are integers, these points satisfy all constraints in the ILP problem. However, we are not yet sure whether this point gives the maximum for Z in the ILP problem because we haven't considered P sub B yet. We just bear in mind that so far the highest value of Z we have obtained for the ILP problem is 140 which is achieved at 2, 2. Besides, we do not need to branch P sub A further because the point 2, 2 satisfies all constraints in the ILP problem. Next, we solve the subproblem P sub B. It is to maximize this objective function subject to 10x1 plus 6x2 is less than or equal to 35 x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 4, x1 is greater than or equal to 3, and both x1 and x2 are non-negative. By graphical method, we get that the objective function has a maximum value of z equals to 145 achieved at the point 3, 5 over 6. This time x1 is an integer, but x2 is not. Do we need to branch p sub b into two subproblems? The answer is yes. The reason is that p sub b has a maximum value of z equals to 145, and this value is larger than z equals to 140 obtained from p sub a. Therefore, it may be possible that the subproblems under p sub b give a maximum value of more than 140. Therefore, we have to branch p sub b into two subproblems by imposing the additional constraints that x2 is less than or equal to 0, and x2 is greater than or equal to 1, respectively. Let us denote the first subproblem of p sub b as p sub b a, and the second subproblem of p sub b as p sub b b. For the subproblem p sub b a, we need to maximize this objective function subject to these constraints. Please note that since P sub B A is a subproblem of P sub B, therefore, besides having the constraint x2 is less than or equal to 0, 
It also has the constraint x1 is greater than or equal to 3 here. Similarly, for the subproblem P sub BB, besides having the constraint x2 is greater than or equal to 1, it also has the constraint x1 is greater than or equal to 3 here. Let us now solve the subproblem P sub BA. The feasible region of P sub BA is shown in the diagram here. It is a line segment. By graphical method, it has a maximum value of Z equals to 140, which is achieved when having x1 equals to 3.5, x2 equals to 0. This time x1 is not yet an integer, so this point is not a solution to the ILP problem. However, we do not need to branch P sub BA to two subproblems. This is because P sub BA has a maximum value of Z equals to 140, and the point from P sub A, which satisfy the ILP problem, also use the same value Z equals to 140. Therefore, the subproblems under P sub BA will not give any higher value than Z equals to 140 anymore. Thus, we do not need to consider branching P sub BA any further. Let us now solve the subproblem P sub BB. However, the feasible set of P sub BB is empty, so it is infeasible. We do not need to branch P sub BB into subproblems anymore. Since there is no other node we need to branch further, we have finished the procedure. In our situation, we have found that the point 22 satisfies the ILP problem and give a maximum objective value of Z equals to 140. Thus, the point 22 is the optimal point to the ILP problem, and the ILP problem has a maximum value of Z equals to 140. To summarize, by branch and bound method, the ILP problem has a maximum value of Z equals to 140, achieved when having x1 equals to 2, x2 equals to 2. The following tree diagram gives us the process and solutions obtained in each stage. The orange number indicates the sequence of handling the subproblems in our deductions. And we have obtained the optimal point here. It is important to notice that whenever we come across the following situations to an existing subproblem, there is no need to branch this subproblem further. Case 1. This subproblem is infeasible. This is addressing to the subproblem P sub BB in our example. Case 2. The solution of the decision variables in this subproblem satisfy the ILP problem. This is addressing to the subproblem P sub A in our example. Case 3. The optimal value of the objective function of this subproblem is no greater than that in another subproblem, which the solution of the decision variables satisfies the ILP problem. This is addressing to the subproblem P sub B A in our example. You can refer to the lecture notes for the written descriptions of the procedures for this example.